this needs to be a learning moment for Formula One as a sport because what was said was unacceptable. The lack of media response was unacceptable. And actually, we have to be braver in calling it out, regardless of who it is. Yeah, Helmut Marko is a senior figure at Red Bull. Tough. He said something ridiculous. He needs to be called out. Has he been as good as I think he can be? Because he's a bloody brilliant driver. Probably not. But this isn't that conversation, right? You don't need to be the perfect victim to be a victim of something that's absolutely abhorrent and unjust. And they have a responsibility uh, to to not not just to Checo, but to all of the uh, all of the the fans around the world and the young kids that that watch F1 to 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 make a point to say that this is not acceptable, and and that there will be consequences for for people that say these kinds of things. Like so much of social media is is taken up by sort of little controversies. Like, oh, did they do that? Did they do that on purpose? Did Yuki Sonoda really get sent out because they just wanted to get a safety car? And everyone's like, nah, nah, nah. This one actually happened. It was real. Now hold on, chaps. <laughs> I, don't, I, I I wasn't listening. But, so can, you can, just, can Cameron win me back home? You've That's just, the you've just agreed. Okay. You weren't listening. No, no, I was listening, but I didn't. I didn't understand the gravity of the situation. <laughs> you missed me. Did we just agree to put Crashgate into an Abu Dhabi in three? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Backstay, that's not the that's not the exam answer, sir. Crashgate in two, and Abu Dhabi in three. No, Baxter, have a think about that, sir. Oh. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Shakedown Podcast. With me as always, my brethren, my friends, my brothers and co-hosts, Shez and Baxty. How are we keeping, chaps? You know what? It doesn't matter how you are keeping. But in this episode, we need to get serious for a second. I apologise, chaps. Baxter looked at me, like, what are you doing, Cameron? Who are you? How dare you? Where are your manners? Mate, we've got to get some rock in. We, we, need to, we need to spread some positivity in the F1 media cycle this week. But because it's in chaos, chaps, Helmut Marku. Marku? Marco? Whichever way you say it, it doesn't matter. That's what it doesn't matter about. Helmut comes out and says some rogue stuff. And not for the first time, Baxty. Um, but this time, his lens was focused very firmly on Max Verstappen's teammate, the Mexican Minister of Defence, Checo Perez. Marco said something to the effect of criticising Perez's performance and attributing that to his geographical heritage, him being of Mexican heritage, being born and raised in Mexico. Baxty, to Helmut Marco's comments, you reacted how, sir? I was fuming. I was absolutely fuming. I just, you know, it's 2023 and we've got comments like this still happening. You know, it's just unacceptable, you know, for somebody senior in Formula One to make comments like that about anyone, let alone their own driver. But it went beyond that because there was almost an entire silence from the F1 media about this. They didn't say a single thing. The only journalist who said anything about it was Scott Mitchell Marm from the race. You know, he was the only one that put anything out there. Um, and the only time we saw the major publications talking about it was when Marco apologised. You know, not, yeah, there was only Scott Mitchell called out and condemned his comments. We all, as fans on Twitter and everything else, we were there saying, what the hell is this? This is an absolute disgrace. Even the Red Bull news pages on Twitter were like, no, 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 this is this is just unacceptable. But this is a pattern of behaviour from Marco. You know, he, he said stuff like this before about Checo. He said horrible things about Lewis as well. He said things, you know, that have crossed the line with Yuki Tsunoda. This is this is a repeated behaviour. And yet, Formula One didn't say anything. We race as one, right? Unless your name's Helmut Marco, because you can say whatever you want without fear of any recrimination. You know, they were more than happy to throw Nelson Piquet out, rightly, rightly, for what he did to Lewis. Well, why is Helmut Marco even in Singapore this weekend? He shouldn't be anyone near, near that paddock. He should have been suspended. The only official 
response we got was from the Mexican Grand Prix organizers going, we're going to stand with our driver. Yeah, nothing from Stefano Domenicali. Red Bull have said nothing. Max Verstappen's response today was, oh, he's apologized, move on. No, you've got to call it out. Lewis Hamilton called it out. You know, he was asked about it. I don't see why Lewis should be the only driver that has to be asked about it. But, you know, this needs to be a learning moment for Formula One as a sport because what was said was unacceptable. The lack of media response was unacceptable. And actually, we have to be braver in calling it out, regardless of who it is. Yeah, Helmut Marko is a senior figure at Red Bull. Tough. He said something ridiculous. He needs to be called out. And, yeah, he should be punished. There he goes. Very succinctly put. So, Shez, expand on that for me, bro. What was your reaction when you heard Helmut for the gazillionth time step out of line and um, and say something that's uh, at best questionable, at worst xenophobic mm. and racist? Yeah, I think that was the problem with it is because it's such a repeat offence, um, there's hardly any surprise in it. You know, um, the, the fact that he would say something like that wasn't particularly out of out of context for him. Uh, what made it even worse was that he then doubled down on it when he was asked to explain his comments. Um, he 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 made it even worse, which which tells you that he actually doesn't even understand that what he said is um, offensive and racist. Um, it's it's the kind of comment that. If it happened in 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 an organisation that I work in, it just you know, it just wouldn't be tolerated. Um, you you'd be you'd be hounded out. You know that 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 wouldn't be allowed to stand. So I absolutely echo everything that Baxi has just said. That by not <clears throat> my 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 real concern about this is by not speaking out and by not condemning it. F one. And the and the F one community are complicit in allowing this, um, and they have a responsibility uh, to to not not just to Checo, but to all of the uh, all of the the fans around the world and the young kids that that watch F one to 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 make a point to say that this is not acceptable, and and that there will be consequences for for people that say these kinds of things. Um, even even after um, we've we've arrived in Singapore and these things have been aired, there still hasn't been any official comment from from F one. Um, perhaps they perhaps they feel they can't, but I feel that that position is also unacceptable. Um, and it's it's sad that it's left to platforms like like this to have to do the work that. That needs to be done by by the people in power. Bloody Nora, chaps! How how do I expand on both of your points? There, here's where I, where I am, and I want to kill this quickly here because it's a painful subject that I'd, I'd rather not <clears throat> have to revisit. Right, so I, I re open full disclosure, hundred percent transparency. I really didn't want to talk about this, chaps. I I, I love F one and I love sport, right, and and. Sport is almost, and this is an off-trotted out cliche, sport is an, uh, an escapism mechanism and it, it allows you to kind of put down the seriousness and, and your woes and troubles in life for a weekend. So, and, and I agree with that to an extent, right? But obviously there's always socio-political overlap with sport. There, there, there has always been and there will always be. However, as a, as a black British male of Caribbean heritage, who grew up in a in a in an all Caucasian neighbourhood? I I've dealt with racism more than most white right, and can talk to it. And so, almost as a coping mechanism, wherever possible, I kind of don't want to talk about it, right? Because it's painful and it's hurtful. Still, I don't want to like reopen those wounds because they never heal, really. This this is the truth, and this is me talking from my own personal experience. Everything I say is a function of that. Here's where I am though. Checo Perez is by no means the perfect victim. And here's what I mean by that. Is Checo worthy of a bit of criticism? 
absolutely could he do more or for, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it right I don't know Checo Perez personally to talk to that has he been as good as I think he can be because he's a bloody brilliant driver probably not but this isn't that conversation right you don't need to be the perfect victim to be a victim of something that's absolutely abhorrent and unjust what Helmut Marco said and what he's been doing for the longest time was completely out of order. The fact that he even bloody, I suppose this is, here's the thing with Helmut, though he's a PhD, the, the fact that he said, the fact that he attributed all these traits to a continent, which by the way was the wrong continent because Mexico's in North America, not South America. It, it I don't even want to dignify that nonsense of, with a response, chaps. It, if, if anybody with a rational mind must know that you can't, you, you can't just brush, you can't attribute one trait to a whole, con it's nonsense, you just, it's just, it's racist, it's xenophobic, it's stereotyping, it like any which one, any which negative adjective that you want to throw at it, it is, it's really, really bad, and I'm tired to, tired of talking about this stuff around F1, so I just want to watch F1, and, and moreover, here's why it's particularly painful, how can I rock up as the man that I am every single weekend and not every single, nearly every single weekend and there's something like this. When they did the re-race as one thing and, and I saw, imagine the, pic, the picture of Lewis there kneeling with half the bloody grid behind him, his comrades, the, his fellow drivers stood up. The imagery Baxty is, is, is shocking. It's ridiculous. Like we can't even get on the same page on something as 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 absolutely unjust as that last last thing i'll say on this um helmet helmet marco is a serial killer as far as these things and something if i went to work and said something half as bad as that even alluded to something like that i'd be in hr and it would be a disciplinary at best a sacking at worst f1 F1 is a sport, right? And gazillions of people watch this around the world and they need to hold themselves to account. Just as Shez said, because my son's watching, Shez, your little one's going to be watching. And that there is, there is, they might want to, they might not want to claim this role model moniker, but they are role models. And if they don't act accordingly, then it kind of, it opens the door for other corporations and other injustices to happen all around the world. Lastly, chaps on this before I start crying on camera. When I saw Lewis, it pained me. It, it This was like the final, um, this was the final ripping off of the plaster off of my PTSD wounds in a, in a previous life, yeah. When I saw Lewis have to pitch the questions to Ted Kravitz, fair play to Ted Kravitz for talking about it, right? Because we need more of that. This is... Um, Journalism is more than just integrity. It's, it's the courage to stand up to to the parties that hold the most power, right? Like you can't, um, you you owe it to us to report these things true and fair, shoot straight. And I think a lot of, like Baxter alluded to, man, there were, Scott Mitchell, bless him, but there are a lot of publications and outlets who haven't even covered it now or just covered it once the apology came and kind of talked, instead of talking about the root of the problem, talked about Checo Perez's underperformance, like that's got anything to do with it. Again, rewind a couple of minutes to hear me talking about the perfect victim. Checo Perez doesn't need to be the perfect victim to be a victim of a crime or an injustice. Final thing on this, chaps. It, bro it completely broke my heart to see Lewis stood up on Sing in Singapore race weekend mm. having to talk about this. You could see, I could see on his face, his countenance, he doesn't want to talk about this. He's doing all he can behind the scenes with the commission and pro like all of that other good stuff, yeah, with a view to kind of weed out what he's gone through and been a victim of all, all his life, which in essence is racism and prejudice. He doesn't want to talk about that now. He's come to, he's a racer. He's come to race. He, he doesn't want to be, like when Ted pitched the question at me and he said, of course. Ted was like, I need to ask you the question. And Lewis was like, of course you do. Like he's just, he's just 
can't be bothered. He's like nearly 40 years old and he's been dealing dealing with this and swimming up this stream all of his bloody life. He doesn't want to have to deal with this. He doesn't want to have to ask these, answer these questions. And so I saw myself in my reaction to the whole facade, knowing that I was going to have to come on with you guys and talk about it was exactly as was Lewis's tired tired of injustice, tired of racing, tired of having to be the bloody figurehead and the face that speaks to it and and tries to solve for it. It was just like, you could just see in his like, his shoulders got heavy and his body language was like, again, is this what we're talking about again? It's it's long and it's it's not a good look for the sport chaps and it, it needs to, um, yeah, F1 needs to do better. Should we go to our next agenda item, chaps, before I start throwing pencils around my house and smashing screens? Because it's it's a point of anger. Go on, then let's talk about Singapore, because ultimately we do have a... And even as I say that, it feels mad, right? Serious to... Is what I feel like we should almost spend the entire 60 minutes of this episode diatribing Helmut, but I don't know, chaps. I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. It's too burdensome for me as it was per Lewis Hamilton. Let's talk about Singapore, chaps. Baxty, is this another Max Verstappen track? Is he going to nail it? Or, as I'm hearing, is Checo Perez going to take advantage of these slow left-handers and, and do <laughs> something that he should have done a couple of races back, Baxty? Um, Max has always traditionally been very quick at Singapore, um, though I did see the most extraordinary stat earlier, that Max has led less laps at Singapore <laughs> than Antonio Giovinazzi. Oh my god! I That's... could not believe that when I read that. Um, it, it's four to three. Like, but yeah, as I said, Max has always been very quick, but just clearly never been quick enough to be in the lead. I think. Look, last year, I think he would have decimated everybody uh, had he not had that fuel issue in qualifying, and then the conditions were such that he wasn't really able to charge through. And you know, Checo being Checo on a street circuit was a slightly different breed of Checo. Um, I fully expect Max to win. I Singapore is one of the few tracks that he's not won at. Um, off you go. Go go win. I don't see anybody getting close to that RB19. I know the track's been modified as well. So there's now a straight, which that plays into Red Bull's hands massively with their oh. straight line speed. Um, and particularly with DRS, if yeah, Max does find himself having to do some overtaking, he will be able to do it very easily. So... Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's going to be 11 in a row. I don't think we're going to see much competition again this weekend. Uh, Checo might put up a bit more of a fight, but, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately. It's just that, that's the way it's going to be. Oh, a, a, a big a big dose of realism there from Baxi. Just talk to me, bro. Give me an alternative view, por favor. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, um, I was actually encouraged last last season uh, that, that Red Bull actually made a mistake, a, a, an actual operational error in qualifying. How often do we see one of those? We'll say they're perfect. Well, they did make one last season in qualifying, and it uh, probably cost uh, Verstappen the race last season. But he also had a bit of a shocker. Um, uh, Lockups, uh, you know, uh, heading off into the escape road. You know, um, he, he definitely could have done better. And... And and last season, Charles Leclerc was absolutely awesome. Okay, he made one error to to allow Perez through, but but his um, his pursuit was something else to watch. And I'm hoping that we'll see a bit more of that on on Sunday. Um, and in theory, uh, a, a track that that rewards um, a high downforce setup um, and trades that in for uh, against having. Um, Having good straight line speed, a la the the Williamses of this world, um, should play to the strengths of um, our team from from Brackley. Um, so there are things to to perhaps feel optimistic about in terms of the the level of um, the, the the level of competition that can be can be um, raised against Red Bull. But I think the the ultimate adaptability of that car and the way that they can run it at whatever ride height they need to, um, without compromising its performance, suggests that they'll probably still be the class of the field. And if one of those two drivers is going to wallop the other, it's probably going to be Max. Um, 
that's probably my summary. Boo. Boo <laughs> and hiss to both of you, Debbie Downers. But you know what? I'm just looking at the, the betting odds and, the, and Max Verstappen once again is a humongous favourite. Chaps, three to ten on. Holy smokes. For those of you who aren't degenerate gamblers like myself, that means you put £10 down and walk away with an additional £3. That's bonkers. <laughs> 77, you're buying money, chaps. 77% of the time, bookies are saying that he wins this race if you run it 100 times under these circumstances. Checo Perez, 9%. 5% Sir Lewis Hamilton. Fernando Alonso, a lot less than that. You know what, chaps? The racing gods can be funny sometimes, yeah. And looking at that track, every time I check out, check out that track, Checo Perez. Every time I look at that track, I feel it's, it does suit Checo. He's sitting go well around there. And I just think sometimes, man, I don't know. People say that karma never sleeps in 24-7 settings. I wouldn't mind seeing Checo Perez go well around there, particularly after the week that he's had, particularly after the comments that he's he's dealt with and the apology and the false statement clearly that he's had to come out and say that he's accepted it and if you know Helmut personally yada 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 he's come out and apologised I wouldn't be surprised to see Checker go really well around here just because um, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that there's a karma catch up crawl to Red Bull and the rest interestingly not to hark back to our first topic of the day Shez <laughs> <laughs> but you but you mentioned the operational excellence yeah. right it's, but it's mm. bonkers yeah, yeah. these guys make no mistakes <laughs> ever and when yeah. it comes to something that's as easy to deal with as this they completely fluff their lines and drop the ball unbelievable chaps I, I go on about Mercedes and pit stops a lot like this if you've got decent HR we talked about Alpine's legal team last year Red Bull HR team need to go on the same naughty step as Alpine's legal team right it's daft but hey, I don't go back to Well, they are a bit hamstrung because Helmet doesn't actually work for the team. He works for Red Bull Corporate. So it, it's, it's that's why it's a bit complicated. But they it's should still, the team should still say, look, we don't accept yeah. what's been said here. I mean, this the fact the team said nothing is unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't see that as an excuse for not saying anything. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying there's that yeah, strange I, dynamic I that I, Red Bull have. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you're not. I, I know you're not. But I, I, but I do feel like that would be Red Bull Racing's excuse for not saying anything publicly, mm. which is always doesn't but, work for us. Well, that doesn't mean that you can't say anything. Well, if we if we look at go on then, so we look at we've gone straight back to it as I try to move on to our second agenda item. I've brought us right back there. So so I think with just with anything like I just. Um, I'm trying to think of a higher, to be fair, if you're talking about like a president, like the highest up person, they always come out and issue their own statement. I think that's the way that the reason why Red Bull Racing have done what they've done. But nevertheless, I think they're, I mean, it would have been all right, wouldn't it? It would have been commensurate at the very least for Red Bull, I don't know, some Red Bull corporate HR or I don't know, their marketing team, something. Somebody needed to put a statement on Twitter saying, you know what? Helmut Marko's like comments are reprehensible. Red Bull Racing does not stand for prejudice or similar to what the Mexican Grand Prix put out. Right, yeah, this isn't yeah, what yeah. we stand for. This isn't what F One's about, and we wholly condemn the comments of yeah. anyone that makes those, including Helmut Marko, who did it this time. Nowhere to be seen. Makes it tough, man. As Max Verstappen goes on with these ridiculous things nearly every week, it just leaves me leaves me conflicted, chaps. Should we get on to our third agenda item before we kill Red Bull to death and Helmut Marco? Go on then, lads. We've got a top five. We need to talk about the top five controversies. So in this game of top five, each one of us is going to submit a top five and then we're going to have to come to some sort of consensus. Try to come to some sort of consensus at the end, which is always the techie portion of it. Should we do... In fact, let's do five to three, Baxty. Give me your five to three, yeah. top five, top five, top five to three controversies all time in F one history. So, so I do have, I do have an honourable mention, uh, and it's actually the Mercedes tire test because I know that if we don't say it, Oof. somebody's going to come out in the comments <laughs> and say, "Put the Mercedes tire test." Um, look, this was the tire test in twenty thirteen that Mercedes did with Pirelli. 
Uh, I've just watched the races video on this just to make sure that I had all the information available. Um, it was a Pirelli test that was done with Mercedes because they've been having troubles with the 2013 tyres. Um, they uh, they wanted a front running car, so they went to Mercedes. Uh, the FIA initially gave permission for it to happen because Pirelli had a clause that stated they could do it. Um, but they also were of the belief that all the other teams would also be asked to, to do a test of this nature. Um, however, uh, obviously all the other teams found out and it all blew up and they were like, what the hell's going on here? Because, and I think the bone of contention was the fact that they were using current machinery. You know, Ferrari had actually done a test a few weeks before using two year old cars. That's fine. But the problem was, is, and other teams pointed out, they said they feel like, and it was ruled to be that Mercedes had gained uh, an advantage um, by doing this test with Pirelli, even though that they, the, the programs were controlled by Pirelli, everything was controlled by Pirelli. Mercedes didn't really know the data uh, or didn't know what tyres they were using. Pirelli then shared some data to Mercedes and that's kind of where it crossed the line. Yes, Charlie Whiting had given them permission, but then it, you know, the FIA were like, well, actually, yeah. It's not quite as as clean as we'd like it to be. So I wanted to mention that one because people still seem to think that Mercedes dominated purely because they, of that tyre test, even though the tyres that we used were 2013 tyres. I think there was some 2014 tyres used, but they were mostly 2013 tyres. If you think that Mercedes dominated because of that tyre test, you need to go and have a look at yourself in the mirror because that's just completely wrong. And that's why that is my honourable mention. Um so off that little aside, uh, number five, I've gone for Hill Schumacher ninety four. Um, oh, oh, sorry, I, yeah, Richard. that's a bit low for my for my money, yeah. but still, do, do um, continue, sir. There's a lot of recency bias with mine, and you'll see that with the with the list that comes in. So, look, we'd had the Senna Prost stuff um, in the in the late eighties, early nineties, but this was as blatant a piece of taking your rival out in the last race as you'll ever see. Um, particularly after everything that had happened, you know, with, with Senna dying and Hill picking up Williams and, and getting them back into the title fight. Um, and like other events, there was no real resolution to it. It was like, oh, well, you crashed, that's it. You know, um, you know, Michael went off, Damon tried to pass him. Michael then rejoins the track, tr tries to stop Hill from going past him. The two collide. Michael goes up in the air and out the race. Hill tries to go on and then his suspension is broken. That's that. Um, and Michael was world champion of 1994. Oh. Number number four, I've actually gone for the Red Bull cost cap breach. Um, and the, you know, people will not be surprised to hear me say this, but I'll be trying, trying, you know, put my Red Bull agenda aside for, for two seconds and explain why I think this is so controversial because the cost cap was a brand new regulation that was bought in to help equalize the field. And it was a big new policy that had been introduced by Ross Braun and Stefano Domenicali and the FIA. The first season was 2021 and the team that won the Drivers' Championship in such controversial circumstances and were involved in that epic title fight all of a sudden are one of the teams that go over. Now, Obviously, we don't know the, if there was any advantage gained and everything else. I personally think there was, but I can't quite explain how. So I'm not going to labour that point too much. Um, but for for that new rule to be broken in its first instance, for me, is, is incredibly controversial, particularly with the backdrop that, that it came against. Uh, number three, Spygate. I think we're all noted scribes here. We know Spygate uh, 2007, McLaren are past details of the Ferrari car uh, by a Ferrari mechanic. Um, it all kind of blew up massively. Uh, McLaren were disqualified from the 2007 Constructors' Championship, a Constructors' Championship they would have won comfortably. Um because obviously they had Lewis and Fernando in the car and they were having that epic thing. Um, they were also fined 100 million euros, which took them years to get over. Um, but this was the, the reason why this is so controversial for me is the fact that this is pretty much 
industrial espionage basically going on that somebody has taken it upon themselves to hand over data of a car to another team. Now, the reason why McLaren weren't completely excluded was because they found that, the, and with the 2008 car in particular, there was no evidence of there being any Ferrari data being on the car, that McLaren had it, but they didn't use it. Um, but to think that that was that happened in Formula One, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And yeah, it, the highest fine ever in motorsport history, 100 million euros. It's definitely one of the most controversial moments for sure. Oh, Baxter, I don't hate that. I'm keen to see your two and one because we're going to have some arguments here. You're going to have to leave out some notable controversies. Shez, do tell, sir. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, I think I've probably approached this slightly differently, um, especially given the 1994 one, um, um, only because I've, I've kind of tried to include, uh, talk about controversies in which there was a um, there was a governance issue involved um, rather than just two drivers. Um, so you'll, you'll you'll see what I mean um, when I when I read out the the ones i've got but they are slightly different and um, my my notable exception was actually barge board gate 1999 um just it's close to my heart it was uh it was a um just just for uh, for people that don't know what this one was about um malaysian grand prix 1999 penultimate race of the 99 season um McLaren and Ferrari are both in contention for both the constructors and drivers. Uh, Eddie Irvine is up for the driver's title with Ferrari. Mika Hakkinen is up for the driver's title for McLaren. Um, and in that Malaysian Grand Prix, uh, Michael Schumacher makes a glorious return from a broken leg. You know, uh, blitz his pole by a second over his own teammate um, and then goes on to, to be the greatest number two of all time in, in the race itself. But immediately afterwards, the... the um, the the stewards uh, uh, bring up Ferrari for having um, barge boards that are illegal. Essentially, this is followed immediately by a press conference by Ross Braun saying, "Yeah, we messed up. We're, we we should be excluded." And Ferrari were excluded, um, wrapping up the whole title. And therefore, uh, the final race was considered basically null and void because um, McLaren had already walked away with both the. The drivers and the constructors but in the in the interim between the malaysian grand prix and the and the final japanese grand prix ferrari came up with a frankly ridiculous um defense of why the barge wards were legal um and the controversy stems from the fact that that was accepted um and you could argue that was it accepted basically because the FIA and F1 wanted a final race showdown and didn't want it to have ended in Malaysia under controversial oh, circumstances. That sounds very familiar, Shez. Doesn't it? <laughs> um, and that's my honourable mention. Come on. Um, right, so uh, the the actual uh, f five, so five, two, three. Yeah? So um, number five, I have got 1994, but it's not, it's not Hill Schumacher. It's traction and launch control gate. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Massive. This is huge. Um, so, again, I'll, I'll do this as brief as I can. So, all electronic driver aids had been banned for 1994. And um, the first three races that season, um, Senna didn't finish. We all know why. Ultimately, what happened in the third race of the season tragic, awful. But Ida, he's standing at the end of the pit lane saying, that the Benetton is illegal. So the FIA, after San Marino, ask for all the data from that car. And what they find is that in the software, there is indeed an item called launch control. And they don't do anything about it because they the, the argument that Benetton put forward, and it's interesting this is Ross Boron again, um, the argument that, that Benetton put forward is, yeah, we've got the software, but we didn't use it. And that's used, you know, that's used as their argument uh, for not penalising Benetton, uh, yeah, who then go on to win the title. Yeah, of so, course. Did it look like they were using it off the line neither, did it? 
the way that Schumacher used to get those rocket starts each and every single time without fail, of course. Cheers, Ross. Just say it. So uh, that's number five. Uh, number four for me is um, uh, Casio Chicane Gate, 1989. Um, this is the uh, Prost Senna um, final chicane in, in Suzuka clash in which um, Senna tried an impossible move and Prost decided to turn in on him. So who knows whose fault that was. Um, but the the controversy for me in and that one Go on, Shays. We're going to have to talk. In fact, I'll save it. This is techie already. Please. Yeah, of course it's techie. I love this one. There's, there's so much to talk about. An impossible one, but... move. Ambitious, Shays. Not impossible. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. Maybe I'm maybe I'm exaggerating, but it was okay. a highly ambitious. Ambitious, <laughs> but you can't, if you prost it. Right, look. In today's game, you, prost can't turn in like that. That was, that was, um, that was Head Ed 97 before Head 97, right? That, that that type of turning. You can't just turn in like that, Shez. Okay, but okay, but that's not the controversy here. Oh, all right. The, for, for me, that, that's... Me that's Because <laughs> for me, that's not the controversy. The, Go on. That, was, that was ultimately a racing incident that was ruled on by the stewards at the time. Okay, uh, and, and they, and they both, both of those drivers were out of the race. The controversy for me is Senna being allowed to is, is Senna getting pushed back onto the track, taking the um, taking the escape road, and then coming back into the race and winning that race. Even that's not the controversy. The controversy for me really is the is the fallout from that via the FIA afterwards, and the fact that not only was Senna thrown out of that race, which ultimately I don't have a massive problem with, but it's the fact that he was then given. A six month suspended ban and a hundred thousand dollar fine um for for not just that perceived injustice that that perceived infraction but somehow all of his other driving infractions up until that point which had never been uh, which had never been taken to a steward's courtroom ever suddenly he was on trial for all of that stuff as well so he's lost the championship great but he's also been he's also had his reputation um dragged through the mud and has been given a fine and has been given a a, a suspended ban unbelievable that i mean and, and the way that prost won that particular title um the only reason i can i can possibly think that that is in hindsight okay is because of the way that 1990 ended um okay. and i think and i think 89 and 90 together make up that entire controversy which is why i think it's huge um but it's not even in my top three because number chaos yeah because number three for me is abu dhabi gate um only number three only number three um i don't think i need to talk about this too much and i'm sure we'll get into it but there's a huge amount to talk about in terms of abu dhabi i'm i'll be shocked if i'm the only person that has this on their list um but maybe it's shocking to you guys that it's as low down on my list as it may not be in yours. That's it. Holy SH1T, lads. I think I might have missed one off. <laughs> Whatever, we will go with it. <laughs> All right, cool. Worthy mentions. <laughs> I, you know, it's my story and I'm sticking to it, lads. Worthy mentions, Abu Dhabi 21. Don't ask me any questions, lads. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, all right, let me make my case. As controversial as it was, for me... In my subjectivity, I think that others on this list were somehow more controversial. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Abby Dabby worthy, worthy, worthy mention. In fact, you know what, bruv? I was, let me say this about Abu Dhabi before everybody absolutely destroys me forever. Fat one jihad and everything. I think Abu Dhabi, right? I think half of the hullabaloo about Abu... Okay, so it was bloody controversial. Let me get that out of the way. It was super controversial. I'm not saying that it wasn't, but this is this is a game of relativity, right? I think half of the Abu Dhabi controversy was the, the, the new fan base, the afters, the sense of injustice, the time that we were at in life and the, the, the history of the world, right? I think if... I think, actually, I feel like you've said it before. If Senna Prost 1990 happens today, 
we're we're going. It's World War Three, right? Properly, like it ha- it has to be. Everybody, we're marching on the street. Everybody, it's World War Three, right? Which is why I have some of these other ones higher up the list. But worthy mention Abu Dhabi twenty one and all of that injustice and controversy. Also worthy mention Senna's passing. And again, listen, F one is a dangerous sport, and and Senna's not the first, nor will he be the last person to. To, to die in a car, sadly, I believe. Very morbid there, Cameron. But let me say this. Um, the controversy around Senna's death for me wasn't the actual incident, right? It was the... It was the witch hunt after that, the fact that the media desperately wanted somebody on whom they could place and pin Senna's death. And for a while, chaps... That looked like it was going to be Adrian Newey, right? I remember like very, very clearly there was a narrative being peddled that Williams had been too edgy with their design philosophy and caused what ultimately happened to Senna at Tamborello. Second worthy mention. Number five on my list, 1990 Prost Senna. And anybody here who doesn't have that on their list can dismiss themselves now, quite frankly, because that is an absolute chaos theory. 89, Shez, are you having a laugh? 1990, uh, I know you've kind of grouped them. You don't think 1990 was more controversial than 89? I, I think you can't put those, you can't separate those two. I, one, I think, one happens without the other. Uh, okay. and, and and again, I'm, I'm going to argue my case about this and I'll tell okay. you. All right, cool, tell you cool. So let me, let me give you the bit, let me, let me give you the brief because we haven't even, good a time, mate. We're, I'm, I'm taking too long, right? So in, <laughs> in five for me, Prost Senna 1990, if only because it was the crescendo to a generation-defining rivalry made all the more sumptuous and juicy by what had happened the previous two years. Number five. Number four, I am going for... Oh, this is so techy. My order's all over the shop. We're going to have... You know what? Don't quote me on this. Number four, Crashgate. Techy chaps. Too techy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four, four is crash gate, mate. My other ones. You, you're going to argue me all day, Shez, but we will argue and we will get to a consensus ultimately. I promise you, because I've got good cases. Crash gate, because it's it's um, it has all of the the constituent parts for a juicy story, right? And super controversial. Bloody Flavio Briatore, Alonso's in there. Nelson PK Jr. with his heritage. Number four, crash gate. Take that to the bank. Number three. Oh, this is techie, chap. This is techie. It doesn't matter anyway. You guys are going to laugh me out the shop. But I don't care. Number three, Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, Hungary, 2007. Here's why. Again, another another slow builder, right? Or not so slow. When Fernando... I remember watching this live... When Fernando's not not moving, and I'm just like, "What's going on here? Does he mean it?" And you can hear the commentators, their 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 cerebral pins start churning. Right, they're like, "The the, the cogs are going. What is he? Do? Oh my god, he's done it on purpose. Bonkers, super controversial." And there you have what comes after. He wants to go two to one, chaps. There's my five to three. Shares, you want it? Sure. Um, okay, so so my. Uh... My top two are uh, at number two. You know, I've, I, this is this is one of those times I'm actually pretty happy with the with the order of my of, of how I've put this together. But um, happy to be argued out of town as usual. Um, so number two, I've got Spygate 2007 uh, for all of the reasons that Baxi just said. Um, I mean, ut- utterly, utterly ridiculous that that that, that is a real story um, that. <laughs> A, a disgruntled dude from Ferrari decided to give his mate a whole, like a, a massive dossier and sent, and then his mate's missus then went to the local photocopier to, to get it all. That's the most daft I thing mean, that I've ever heard of in my this? life. Unbelievable. Um, I mean, and, and yeah. And if it weren't for the next one, this would have been number one. But the next one is... Crashgate 2008 has to be has to be the biggest controversy that has ever hit F1 because like this is this isn't just between two drivers this isn't about uh, you know honor and 
gladiators. This is about, th th this is a petty and ignominious reason for having a controversy. This is Renault planning to pull out of the sport and the team go, uh oh, we need to we need to win a race here. How are we going to do it? And then putting their driver, literally putting their driver's life on the line to to win the other driver a race. And to then to then have their lead driver who won that race somehow be bereft of any knowledge that any of this happened. I think I think this 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 is this, this is a controversy that that gives and gives and gives and if it's and again it's one of those where like so much of social media is is taken up by sort of little controversies about well, did they do that did they do that on purpose did Yuki Sonoda really get sent out because they just wanted to get a safety car and everyone's like nah 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 this one actually happened it was real they actually crashed a car to win Fernando Alonso a race. How can that be topped? I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. You know what the joke is, says? I, I, the, only, the only reason why I don't have it higher is because I'm a firm believer in the in the score doggery of F1 teams ad infinitum. Here, here's my point, my counterpoint to that. I don't, that's, are we going to sit here and naively say that that's the first time that that's ever happened in F1? doubt it mate i reckon that's happened at, at least a dozen times that, that it's never been that we've never found that that it's never come to light that's that's the deal it's, cameron it's not about the fact that it's going on it's the fact that this actually happened and came out and the has been reported. i don't that's, know if it's that that's massive no well let me let me i'm gonna bench my thesis for now baxley talk to me two to one okay so i'm gonna say my two to one at the same time and because i kind of have to give reasoning for this um and I thought really long and hard about this. So my number two is Crashgate and my number one is Abu Dhabi. Let me explain why. <laughs> Nobody will be surprised to hear me say Abu Dhabi. <laughs> um, so obviously, we, look, we know what happened with 2008 with Crashgate, Nelson Piquet crashes, Hans Fernando Alonso the win. You know, Alonso was really quick, but it qualified badly. That's why they did it, as well as the other reasons that Shez has said. I mean, this was a team cheating like we have I'd never seen cheating like this ever. Ever, ever, ever. And then you think of the other implications that happened because of that. Implications that we're still dealing with now with Felipe Massa and his court case. Felipe Massa was dominating that race. He then goes into the pit. Ferrari botches pit stop and he leaves too early with his fuel hose still attached. I watched that live and couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable. I still remember the sight of McLaren mechanics applauding the Ferrari <laughs> mechanics as they walked past them with the fuel hose intact. Um, but it cost Felipe Massa the race win. Ultimately, it ended up costing him the championship, hence why the court case is happening. Let's not also forget that the only reason this came out was because Renault did make, probably made the right decision to sack Nelson Piquet Jr., but they forgot that he had that in his back pocket because we all know how spiteful Nelson Piquet Sr. is. So, hello, this was always going to come out. But not only that, they were given a suspended sentence for two years. They should have been thrown out for a couple of years and told to come back. Yes, Bria Tori and, and Simmons carried the can for it, but um, yeah, they should have been thrown out. It, and Fernando Alonso was allowed to keep the race win because he apparently didn't know anything about it. That should have been removed. Nico Rosberg should have had his first race win in 2008, not 2012. And then, of course, it's all been refired up because of Bernie Eccleston, who's now you turned on that and said, oh, well, you know, I didn't really mean it like that, even though you bloody said it, Bernie. You know, did that, that for me is why it's a slam dunk top two. Here's why I didn't put it above Abu Dhabi. Singapore 2008 was a team cheating. Abu Dhabi 2021 was a failure of governance. You know, look, I'm not going to relitigate the whole race because we, we were all there. We all saw what happened. And the FIA on that night, not just with Michael Mazzi, but with the stewards as well, failed the sport. You know, we trust the FIA to uphold, to set and uphold the governance of motorsport. That's what we 
we place our trust in them to do that as as the viewers. And on that night in Abu Dhabi, they badly let down Lewis Hamilton and they, they badly let down Max Verstappen and they badly let down us as fans. I F1 had never been more popular. That title fight had engaged people to get involved with the sport. And Michael Massey made an erroneous decision and I'm fairly certain he did it because he wanted to have a racing finish. I think that's the reason. I'm not I don't buy into some of the conspiracies you hear that, you know, there was a phone call put in saying, you know, Max needs to win, but I don't think so. I think Michael Mazzi, under pressure, cracked and bottled it. So that was that was mistake number one, and that has overshadowed Max's first title win massively. And I he didn't deserve that. He 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 did not deserve that because he driv- driven an epic season and he deserved to win the title the right way, not basically having it gifted to him. The other bone of contention I have is with the stewards because Mercedes obviously protested. Now, obviously, I don't know what the stewards could have done, but the stewards basically just kind of went, waited for something they could cling on to to defend Michael Mazzi, and Red Bull gave them the out with the any, not all, you know, crap. Uh, and you know that means back to the yeah whatever the hell that means you know just throwing out you know entirety of um you know of years worth of precedent just to basically defend your race director because he brought the sport into disrepute and i think that the distrust that we see in the fia now is rooted in that evening in abu dhabi in 2021 it's just that's for me that's why i had to put it above Crashgate because this was the governing body screwing up in such a way that it, it disadvantaged one driver against the other. Um, you know, it's very close between the two. Like th- this is not me putting my Lewis Hamilton hat on and going, Abu Dhabi. I-, I did think long and hard about this. Yeah. You know, and I ha- I did go with Abu Dhabi just over Crashgate because of that. Oh, let's get into it then lads. My, oh, just quickly, my two Spygate number one, Hill and Schumacher, 94 Adelaide. I, don't, I do not care, Shes. I'm, I'm a chaos merchant. Go. You can take it to the back. <laughs> Let's I'm go. I'm going to argue it to death. <laughs> right. So our, co- our common ones, we have, we all, we've all got Spygate. We've not all got Abu Dhabi 21, but I will put that on the list for an easy life. And then we've all got Crashgate. So Baxi's got Hill and Shes. How do you mm. not have Hill and Schumacher? Yeah, I, d- same... I, don't, I don't even know you anymore. Oh, because of your framing about governance. Yeah, yeah, because because this but, uh, is basically but this, a, but this a... was a governance issue. Mm. Shes, that's really, why it was not a... really. That was that was very consistent for the time. For for the time, it was absolutely. It was All the same of these way. Super that... consistent, consistently inconsistent for the time. No, Shes, that's no, the not. problem. The, the, the fact that so so we're going to talk about 1990, right? You're, you're going to argue for 1990 to be on there, and I'm going to say that. 1990 can only be on there if 89 is on there and i'm happy for those to go on there, together there can but, only be one shares but, there but they can can't they can't one. no because because i think they're, separate they're, the they're, yeah, yeah i think yeah. They're, they're, they're the same thing and and for the reason that senna should have been thrown out of 1990 for that ridiculous move um and schumacher should have been thrown out of 94 because of that ridiculous move and if you really want to argue it and I don't because I don't because I think that that the the eighty nine move was a, you know a bit of this and a bit of that and you could yes it was predominantly one driver's fault but it wasn't like a sackable offence and um, you know you could argue that 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 Pro should have been thrown out of eighty nine but but the but the times that that you know when when those races were held that's not what happened and it was only when it, when you got to nineteen ninety seven which I I'm flabbergasted that none of us have got on this. And um, when uh, when Schumacher took Villeneuve out, that's when the FIA stamped their foot down and said, actually, we're not going to have our championships dict- uh, um, dictated to by drivers crashing into other drivers. Up until that point, that was just par for the course. So that's why I, I, I don't think that that Schumacher Hill is as big of a deal as the the whole 89 to 90 thing because that 89 to 90 thing did have a political slant to it there was that entire winter where senna was going i've been hard done by they've manipulated it and then the fia going no no 
you you're out of order you can't say this we're going to give you all this and then senna coming back and going screw all of you i'm just going to drive into the side of my rival and 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 basically giving himself the result that he wanted that that for me is why 89 90 go together and 94 schumacher hill was a was a snap decision by a driver um characteristic of, of, of that driver in 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 those ki- kinds of situations but it wasn't one that involved the entire paddock and brought the whole sport into disrepute no one really questioned it at the time even oh, though we're questioning it now you might have you, says, you might have how but, very dare you right may i approach the stand to, hit it. to, to question the witness go on so here we go shes i think you are smoking when you're talking about 1994 Adelaide and Schumacher. And I can't believe Baxley doesn't even have it on his... Oh, no, number five. Thank God. You don't even have it on your list, do you, Shez? You... There was a, the, there was a much bigger controversy in 94 than that. Sac- than that. The sacrilege. What are you say? Oh, Go on, Baxley. I would say 94 was a season full of controversy. Obviously, you've mentioned Ayrton's death. Shez has mentioned the launch control. Uh, there was also the Jos Verstappen incident as well. Yeah. Which, wow. Yeah, and that was another Benetton flow, cheating like, thing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, ninety four was a very controversial season. Now, maybe our British bias is coming out here, Cam. In that, you know, we've we, we've gone for the which one harmed the British driver the most, and that was Hill Schumacher. You know, you know what it is though, Bax. Yeah. Mm, maybe. Oh. Maybe, maybe there is a bit of that in there, Baxty. Like, I'll, I'll put Let's my point hands up. up. We're acknowledging British bias. But here. He's, acknowledging he's... it. But you know what, Baxty? I'm not. I'm not. not Let me not, be not, honest. Not this guy. <laughs> even even when I was younger, I've never been like a patron, patriot extraordinaire. That's that. I did love Damon Hill. Don't get it twisted. And I was rooting for him massively to win that championship. And he should have won that championship. But here's my pro- here's my thing. Behave yourself, shares. We don't have enough. that log. How do you mean, bro? Oh, well, this is going to, we're going to do the old uh, availability heuristic, aren't we, again? But listen, Damon, Damon, that I think Damon deserved to win that championship. Okay, look, if you're going to do the waterfall and account for the erroneous and anomalous circumstances in Schumacher, this, that, the other, whatever, cool, that's fine if you're talking deserving. But again, the reality was that Schumacher did something dodgy in the last race. That was, that was so explicitly dodgy that I just couldn't see when it happened in real time I remember looking at my old man and I was like well you you, you can't do that <laughs> you can't you can't do that that's akin to what I would do when I was playing football and I was losing and I would just pick my butt it was just like a it was cheating <laughs> you can't you can't do that and not get and and what and still win the championship and even the flipping it was very similar to Abu Dhabi 21 right in that like the bloody, the way that Hill had to win at Suzuka and he was, do you know what I mean? There was like, it was kept to keep the championship alive. That whole thing was cares. The fact that Adelaide was, it's a back-to-back trade and you had to wake up if he was watching in the UK super early in the morning and it was the title decider. And then, and then the way it happened, right? There was always a thing about Michael Schumacher's ability to handle pressure and then Hill did it and he put, Oh, it's too much. That has to go on the list, Chez. I'm sorry, mate. Cameron, if this was a if, if this was a top five uh, greatest title deciders of all time, I'd say yes. That should be in there because it has everything. But in terms of controversy, like in terms of how how these kinds of incidents were litigated in the past up until that point and beyond it i think that that was just that's just what happened senna drives into the side of prost senna wins the title despite a, a blatant piece of cheating driving and schumacher did the same thing and you nah, know nah, it, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not even when that nah, wasn't you know when, uh, i'm not even having I don't think what Schumacher did. I think what Senna. I think what Schumacher did was worse than what Senna did to Prost in 1990. Not as dangerous, but it was. Bl- it was more bl- like it was just ah, like both of them were blatant. Nah, Sch- were... Schumacher's was what because mm. ultimately, listen, Senna was hey. always going to Senna. Senna 
made it ve- sent her at least it's telegraphed even worse. he made it premeditated yeah, yeah. Tele- sent her telegraphed and he, you could argue that he had a rationale because he told them like you don't, you don't put me on that side of the grid and yada 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 look ultimately what Schumacher did was super love love a bit of Michael Reagan Meister Red Baron settings all that but what Schumacher did was like the height like literally yeah. about to park it up and then rawr, Steers yeah. right yeah, yeah, into that. That I, I, is. I agree with all that. I this has to be on the list. Backstage, I, so, solve this for us, Shez. Solve this for us, Backstage, because me and Shez are gonna are gonna kill each other. Can can we just for an easy life? Can we just put Schumacher Hill on the on the list as biggest cup, top five? I'm, top I'm trying five. to think because we've got we've got Crashgate, we've got Abu Dhabi, we've got Spygate as common ones. You guys have got Prost and Senna, possibly as well. Pro- 88, 89 and 90 really is kind of as a combo. So what's the other one that we could, I mean, I'm happy to bin off the cost cap breach. We've got Chez's up a 94 one with the launch Which, control. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I, don't, I don't mind that one. I don't, I don't mind that one. What was the other one you had, Cameron? Like H- Hungary 07. Over Hill and Schumacher. Um, I would say no because because Hungary, I think, led to Crashgate happening essentially, True. like not, not Crashgate, or Spygate. Spygate. Yeah. Mm. yeah, because Alonso basically was so angry at the fact that McLaren reported him. He blackmailed. Oh, he Ron tried Denis to blackmail Ron Dennis, Dennis and said, "I will, I will I'm tell you." So, whilst Hungary was controversial, it actually led to a more controversial moment that we have on the um, on on the thing. Just a quick one, by the way. Um, I went on Chat GPT and asked for the biggest controversies of all time. Just, just to, just to have interest. Do you know which one they included? Go on. They included Multi Twenty One from twenty thirteen. Uh, that, that, that's nuts. Get, get, yeah, I know. That's not a controversy. No, it's not, it, it, of it was it's controversial, contra- but of course, Shez, like, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be major. murder, death, kill to be contra. Yeah. That was controversial, Shez, but, but not, but when not, there not this level that, of. But that's the thing, though. If we're talking about top five of yeah. all time and there yeah, are events that's not, but you're saying but no, you, you just said it wasn't controversial at all it was of course it was controversial mm. but one driver oh, in right. one team decides to overtake the other mate yeah. you're just uh you just score Douglas. that's what Same you wish that. you identify with the score degree as i do to be fair all right then you're not know, prepared to sack off all right I, uh, for an easy life i will sack off oh, hungry i7 i had a big argument for that one you know all right, okay, let me read out the list and then I'll see whether it's worthwhile arguing for Hungary 07. Abu Dhabi 21, Spygate, Crashgate, Hill, Hill Schumacher 94, Adelaide, Prost and Senna 1990, brackets 89. Um, yeah, okay. I'm real we'll argue the to toss on that. No, all, the, all of those sadly are too big for me to. Hungary was massive though, bloody Nora. And what come after that? What Hungary 07 gave birth to? And, and and what's I suppose the controversy a lot of these the controversy kind of played out behind the camera right like do you know what I mean we did we heard about it on the news like Crashgate Spygate but Hungry 07 was something that play, we knew it was coming but it played out in real time before our eyes I think it should get extra points for that but you know what I won't argue it because those are too hard right we need an order chaps a one to five um Shall I propose? Oh, this is techie, lads. I'm going home. I don't think we're going to get free. This is one that we're not going to get free. I don't think. I think uh, we will. I think we will. I go, think. Um, go on then. I've, all right. So you guys, you guys lead on this. Prost Senna ninety, Hill Schumacher ninety four, Crashgate Spygate, Abu Dhabi twenty one. What's your number five, Shes? Uh oh man, I, th- I think my number five has got. Uh, it, it's going to be. Be- between um, Hill Schumacher, sorry, sorry, come um, Hill Schumacher, and um, I think I think yeah, for me actually, my number five's got to be Hill Schumacher ninety four. Um, I think my, my my reasons for that, are, as, as I've said, I think it was this was a this was a this was a deal between two different two drivers, um, and actually, look, Cam, I, I I hear you, man, but but like look back at this now like 20 years later it's going to be 20 years next year look back at this 20 years later and hand on heart tell me that damon hill deserved that title like over the course of that season 
tell me that that he deserved that title like 96 no doubt that was his title you could even argue that yeah, actually, I'm not going to do, take do, that any further. But, uh, but yeah, but, I know you were but, exactly. But, that's exactly what I was going to piece back. No, at you, no, I'm not, I'm not. I wasn't going to bring up the Max Verstappen thing. Right? Like, oh, in that's terms exactly of, what I was going to level but, back at you. It's the but, same argument. But but in terms of the setbacks that Schumacher had that season, okay, it doesn't excuse cheating on the last on the last lap. And I'm not condoning that. I don't think it was right. And there is a level of controversy to it. But 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 in terms of who it affected it affected those two drivers and those two teams would it have been a nice story for damon hill in a williams to win the 94 title yes 100 percent. of course it would have um would he have been in the annals of of time have been the rightful driver to have won that 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 title given everything that had happened to michael schumacher in terms of disqualifications and uh, and um miss races I don't, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't think so. And, and, and the, and the, and the, and the um, put some respect on Damon Hill. I love Damon. I love Damon. Day. But I love yeah, Damon. Yeah. But, but even he yeah. would tell you that, that, that you know, Schumacher was a better driver. Yeah. No, but that's a different question and, that you're and, asking. And, there, and and over the course of that particular season, I think Benetton and Schumacher were probably uh, cheaters. The, uh, but then, then, then traction and launch control gate should be the the the, the controversy you put in. So, I mean, you, know, you can't have it both ways, man. Nah, nah, Shez, I disagree. See? So, no, so no, that's, no, look, yeah, so that's why. Look, so traction gate, traction gate was the um, okay. Traction gate was, of course, the bigger technical story. But I would argue, Shez, I would turn your argument on its head that the government, the government stuff is like, of course, that's the backbone. Like purists will care more about that, but nobody doesn't like in the grand scheme. Yeah, okay, so cool. But we're we're taking off our, our subjectivity caps for this one. I think she says the driver story. When we were doing our the top five most important things in F one, drivers were up there, right? The driver story is like, of course, like a controversy between drivers for the finale is always going to be. It's, it's always got, you've got to give it that respect, right? Like, and plus when it has skullduggery, the traction control thing, Benetton skullduggery, bloody Damon Hill doing it for se- in, in a year that Senna, pa- mate, that yeah. Schumacher did that then, that manoeuvre on the back of what had happened before that is humongous, as a controversy shares, humongous, put some respect on Adelaide 94, mate. Sure, that's why I'm putting it in number five. Oh my of God. the top five greatest controversies of all time against my better judgment is going in at number five. Cut, cut his mic. Somebody cut his mic. Back, <laughs> back to the agree or disagree. Where does... I, I agree. with That was my number five anyway, so oh, I agree with that. Both yeah. of you are heresy personified. I'm not having this. But of course, this needs to be consensus. The heresy and the blasphemy and everything else bad. Number five, Hill and Schumacher goes in. And then number four, Baxter of... Post Senna 90, Crash Gate, Spy Gate, Abu Dhabi 21. Which one is your number four? Stop um, trying to reference him, Shez. No, I'm trying to think where I would put Prost Senna. Because um, hmm. my top two are in there as as two and one, but I'm trying to think, does Prost Senna go above Spy Gate? Um, I think it does go above Spygate. So I'm going to go Spygate at four and then Prost and Senna 8990 at three. And the reason I've done that is because, especially something you said, Cam, driver stories are what it's too much. really engage. And I think this was one of the ultimate driver stories. And, and this wasn't just a flash in the pan moment like 94 was. This was years of build up, you know, 88, great title fight between them. 89, the first incident. Yeah, and let's not forget, you know, Senna was disqualified from the race. He he carried on, but then was disqualified. And Alessandro Nanini, of all people, got a win. Um, and then, obviously, 1990, Senna, for a while, denied he drove straight into him and then admitted it and basically got away with it. Um, so that's why I would put Senna Prost above. I can't put it above the other two. But it's. I would put it above uh, Spy Game. I'm. I'm here for that. Shez, before you go, let me let me talk to you. Let me try and split because I think we're taking the easy route out with 
grouping up Prost Senna 90 and Prost Senna 89. <laughs> argue the case. Which of those, because I think in my mind, Prost and Senna 1990 is more controversial. It's it's a more, um, it's at first it's a more spectacular incident. It's it, It's got the build of the previous year and then the year before that. It's a culmination of, again, like I said originally, of a, of a generational rivalry, right? What say you, Shaz? Uh, I think this is a classic heart versus head argument. Um, you you could say that, that the heart says 1990 because of the visuals, because of the the sheer audacity of um, Senna's, um, uh, Senna's demeanour afterwards and that ridiculous um, interview he did with Jackie Stewart afterwards. Oh, utter, utter, utter <laughs> ridiculousness! You love, Jess, your favourite interview. I hate ever. that interview. It's just so dumb. Um, oh my but, god! But but, but also, it, but also, just just uh, as a tangent, um, <laughs> you, you guys read that that little excerpt I sent you from uh, Malcolm Folly's book, right? The the Jackie Stewart telling telling Ayrton that he needs to grow up uh, off camera. I thought that was that was brilliant and very apt, but. For me, 90 doesn't happen without 89. And 89 was the thing that absolutely set that off. As a, and, and, and 1990 was a direct consequence of 89. And, and 89 wasn't just, wasn't just two drivers coming together. And, uh, and just, just in terms of like your, your, your sort of analysis of that, there were so many incidents in that season, you know, uh, the, um, Mantle, the Mantle, um, Senna clash at Estoril. Um, there are a few others that season as well. That 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 in and of itself, okay, it was in the final race of the season, and there were big stakes attached to it. Actually, as an event, it was it wasn't huge. It was low speed, and neither of the cars actually broke. And if you if you kind of if you if you kind of want to play that forward, if <laughs> if Allah hadn't hadn't sort of given up the ghosts and stayed on. in his car and carried on he would have won that race easily um but he didn't because he because he kind of thought oh senna's gonna get gonna get the boot for this and he banked his entire his entire case i don't think he thought on... senna was gonna get the boot i f i think he thought senna was had screwed his chassis right I, he thought that he'd screwed his chassis. Well, I, yeah well I, either way he thought that that was it for senna right which is yeah, why he decided yeah, yeah, to get yeah. out of the car but if he hadn't if he if he'd been just smart very, about it and just carried on Prost. driving he, he definitely would have won that race which is very unlike Prost. so you're telling Isn't me it? that shows in so, conclusion that so, 89 no, well, is but, 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 there's more, but there's more than that right it's the fact that you then had all of that political stuff going on over the course of the winter that just riled up air and senna to the point that in in Japan in 1990, he just wasn't having it. He just wasn't having it, and he and he did what he did. That that's why for me those two go together. If you just have 1990 on its own, you have the same argument for me that you did for Schumacher Hill 94, and I think they're bigger. That that, think, that's, think... that that for me is two drivers having a beef. But but the thing that elevates this for me is is the political intrigue that happened between the two seasons and the um and the 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 needle that even that, that was there between the fact that Ron De I can't I still can't get over this the fact that Ron Dennis Ron Dennis appealed against his own driver winning the championship that's nuts well, it's not unlike him right I said true hungry. true but, but but that's nuts isn't no, it no no it's chaos but I don't think that's Contra the controversy. It's not here. controversial. No, no, no. Sorry, not as controversial. Like the nineteen ninety controversy was like, I don't know, bro. When you when you comb through the finer details and realise the fact that Senna had had foretold exactly what he was going to do, and then it culminated first turn, first half turn of the first lap, and then bloody Senna kept his foot in even when he was in the barrier. So keen was he to make sure he destroyed everything in his way. I think that's madness, chaos. But anyway, go on. We we digress. So where does where does Prost and Senna go? Shares you'd put that fourth underneath Crashgate, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd be. I would. But um, so, so but, I think, but I, think, but I, I feel like I'm means, getting. Um, I think yeah, outvoted. I think that yeah, means okay. then Shares deciding vote. Although you guys are going to get lots of deciding votes coming up. So we have 
In fact, you know what, chaps? No, I don't. I don't mind Crashgate being in fourth. All right, so third Prost Senna. Wait, wait, wait. Crashgate wait, or Spygate? Wait, 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 Spygate, man. Spygate in fourth. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! Can't, can't have Crashgate fourth, man. Can't. No, you just can't. You just can't. That's that. I mean, especially with the fact that Crashgate is being relitigated now. Right the fact now, that, yeah. that Felipe is that is a know, gift go, that keeps on giving. My going friend. to court over it and trying to get it annulled and trying to win the 2008 championship 15 years down the line i mean yeah you know, i mean yeah spygate is done and dusted and it was very controversial and it was you know the, the biggest fine ever given but the reason i put it at four behind center and prost is um you know is the fact that you know it was just the drivers you know the, the driver drama will always trump political drama and I'm I'm letting you have that. I mean, yikes! I disagree, chaps. But I've been outvoted. I I was I was looking to put Spygate in second. I'll be honest. Spygate, lads. Do we remember all of the things that constituted Sp Spygate? That's why Spygate is second on my list, mate. Before before listen to BB. Okay, so hold on, Baxty. So Baxty, you were going to have Spygate fourth. I think the argument that you just made was to have Spygate behind Prost and Senna, right? I mean, if, I, if I'm being outvoted and it goes in at three, I'm happy for that to happen. And to have Prost and Senna 89-90 at, um, at four. Oh, shit, I've just I've, I've fudged my own argument. I, I'm not, right. <laughs> you just allow me to side with shares. Like. No, yeah, yeah. I've done, my, I've, done, I've done myself over. Oh, no. <laughs> what would I do here? Right, so this was going to be... My, let me pitch mine at you. I was going to go, okay, Hill Schumacher 94 I can live with. Crashgate, Prost, Senna... Spygate Abu Dhabi. That was that was going to be my pitch. Spygate needs to be Spygate can't be lower than two chaps. I think no, you could I even agree. argue Spygate Spy, Spygate as one. You know, Spygate. Yeah, chaps. I think you could argue that. Spygate. I'll never forget bloody um, what's his name? Oh, the bloody the dude narrating the BBC sounds thing. Pete Tong. Yes, Pete Tong. the legend that Pete Tong. He says something to the effect of the when. Uh, is it Stepney's wife went in to bloody get the stuff copied that that um, when she left the the pin had already been pulled on the grenade that would rock F1 forever mate absolutely just chef's kiss in terms of narration mm. and linguistics he's absolutely nailed it there and that's my case chaps for Spygate being it at the very least Come two, on, I'm with you top two Hundred percent top two. So go on now, lads. We've got um, we've, oh, got, I don't we've know. got a balancing figure. Go on, back to the argue against. I, I just, I, I just don't think you can put Spygate above Crashgate because Crashgate. Yes, I've already mentioned that it's being relitigated now, but yeah, this was a, th this was a team going out of its way to cheat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, and, and I agree with Baxter. I, I think I the agree. two to one um, should be Spygate Crashgate, as I, in Spygate one, two, one Crashgate two. one. Yeah. I agree yeah. with Baxter, but I just think, um, I don't know, my naivety is not that strong. I just think F1 teams are called dog or sweat and they do that sort of stuff. Like, Crashgate. I mean, you could see, you guys said that he was, he, PK risked his life. and He bloody practised the manoeuvre on the four, mate. Like, they <laughs> like, messed I, it up. Yeah, I, I think teams just do that stuff, you know. I think they've been doing that stuff for, for since the inception of F1. It's just that this one was erroneous and ominous because it, it came to light. I just didn't think it was, it was contra it absolutely controversial and its place is merited on this list. But for me, chaps, not above, not above um, Spygate, lads. Fudge, Spygate yeah. and all of what came with it. Yeah, so I agree, man. Spygate and Crashgate should be our one and two because in a hundred years time, People are still going to be talking about Crashgate and Spygate. All right, let me pick. Okay, so we're going to let me solve this and try and solve for this a different Ooh, way. Over Abu Dhabi, though. I know. I, yeah, I think I think they might well still be talking so, about that. So, but, so Banks, yeah. the I was going to put you so this is where we're going to get very oh. techy. I've messed up the whole process, lads. Taking my ca accounting cap clean off. I'm going to pick Scott Pygate for number one. There you go, I've said it. 
I'm going right. to pick Skype Bygate for number one. I think the BBC Sounds um, podcast just won me over, Jack, so I don't get it. It was, was good. It was incredible. And where they went into, if you haven't listened to it already, definitely check that. And it was just incredible the way they told the story. It was brilliant. And it is a brilliant story to be told. Hence why I think it's probably the biggest controversy in all of F1 history. Baxty. Yeah, I, I, I can. You, you saw me on that being number one. Bang. Yeah. Okay. But I, I so, don't. My contention is now, do we put Abu Dhabi at two or three? Okay. So we've got. Over one. Crash. Which is how I had Crashgate above, uh, below Abu Dhabi. Uh, on my list and I've explained why because it was the governance failing this was a team cheating versus governance failing um, I've, I've, brought, I've, already, I've already put my pitch but what I would say and I just and this is me preempting things here but I just want to say this is that there will be those that will come and say to us why are we talking about Abu Dhabi again again you always talking about Abu Dhabi Mercedes fans and they will say that and I can understand why they would say that but then in the same breath will then say, but Felipe Massa has a case. Oof, techie. Like, you know, those two aren't compatible. Like, yeah. Oh, no, but oh, but consistency yeah. isn't something that the F1 community, community yeah. has in its so, locker backs, they sadly. Yeah, like, it's just, you know. Techie. You, oh. Crashgate was harsh on Felipe Massa, but it wasn't the only reason he lost the championship. That was there kind of the go. nail in his coffin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abu Dhabi was the direct, well, not the direct, because you can include Baku, but it was the title decider, level on points, eyes of the world on the sport, like never before. Prost and Senna didn't have that in 89 and 90, partly because of era. You know, it, they would have had it, you know, uh, had things been like they are now. But this was F1 at its absolute tip-top peak, the greatest driver against the air apparent, Level on points. It'd been a good race up and you know up until that point. Yeah, okay. There'd been the shenanigans on the first lap, and Michael Massey got that one wrong. Lewis should have given the place back to Max, in my view. Um, but then Nicholas Latifi crashes, set off a chain of events that should really never have happened. If it had happened a couple of laps earlier, and the safety car had been brought in properly, and then Max passes Lewis to win the race. We don't have this conversation. It's the, the it was the controversy surrounding the safety car, then the doubling down by the stewards. And I didn't mention this earlier. The report, which basically admitted, yeah, we got it wrong, but the trophy's been given. Yeah, human error and all that. <laughs> what a joke! Oh, mate, he's pitched me. So, where are you proposing, Backstreet? So I would go. Abu I would go. Crashgate three, Abu Dhabi two. I'm happy to have Spygate at number one, considering the stakes and everything else that went into it, and. Uh, you know, with, with the... Shez is, Shez is frowning. Shez is frowning. But Shez, all right, look. Shez, let me... Um, I agree with Baxter, by the way, and I've put Abu Dhabi in 21 because that's where I think it's going based upon consensus being a thing. But Shez, take off your um, pseudo-obsession with all things infrastructure and politics and regulatory for a second. This Try, try and dismiss that for one second. If you set that down... I don't think there's any way that you can tell me Crashgate is a bigger controversy than Abu Dhabi 21. I think if you if you had a nice little BBC Sounds podcast about Crashgate 20 you know 2008 I think we'd be having a different conversation. <laughs> oh, you think it you think it would be spicier than Abu Dhabi 21? Be honest. Yeah. 100%. Oh, you are smoking something. That's only because there's NDAs involved with Abu Dhabi 21. Oh yeah yeah but even then I don't think you need that the NDAs Abu Dhabi is more controversial than Crashgate. No it's sure. Way. Well, maybe there is a, but maybe you've got a bit. Look, let me self reflect for a second. And maybe there is a bit of recency bias in there. But I just think, okay, here, all right. So we're talking big, we're talking stories again, aren't we, Shez? I think, I think Abu Dhabi is, there is more to Abu Dhabi 21 as a story. Hence why I think it's a bigger controversy. Crashgate is like, okay, so. I mean, who cares? Nelson wow, PK okay. Jr. Who okay. cares about Nelson PK Jr. Shows we're, we're really. Gonna do this. We're gonna do who, this. Who, no, but who cares? Tell me. Non rhetorical question. Could, Nelson PK Jr. What did he ever do? What's he famous for other than being a champion's son? I don't. I don't. Like, Finishing what? second in Hockenheim 2008. Yeah, yeah and Crashgate. Did, well, he, did, he was he, he was uh, Lewis's uh, closest rival in F2, wasn't he? The and, G, and he, GB2. And he, and he nailed him. And First ever Formula E champion as well. 
and in that in the nailed him and Pizzioni going around silver stuff. But listen, that was I, fun I think if you're the name the name name value matters in this. Look, if we're talking Hill and Schumacher, this is the company that Nelson PK Jr. and Flabio are keeping, right? Hill and Schumacher ninety four, Lewis and Verstappen Abu Dhabi twenty one. Bloody Spygate. So that's Lewis, Alonso, Ron Dennis, and all and sundry. I, I don't know, man. Nelson P. George, K. So, Jr. So, okay, you want to do it? You, you want to go down that route, right? So, <laughs> so, Kevin, what, what we always say, right, is that the entertainment in, in Formula One, in all sport, is about personalities, right? It's about personalities yeah. and people. And I don't, I don't think that you, that there's a, that there's a, the, you know the, the story the narrative of crashgate is is it's so compelling because of the people that were involved that you had an entire organization that felt that they were on the line you had a driver that felt that he was basically going to get kicked out and you know he was getting verbally abused in the press and despite that went all right if this is going to save my drive i'll give it a bootful and i'll i'll stack it in the wall and then not only that, but in the inaugural, inaugural Singapore Grand Prix, the first ever night race that F1 have ever had. I mean, just think about the visuals of that, right? It and the sexy. and the res, and the result that that then had, and 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 just coming back to your to to, to your last point, what Baxter said is very pertinent. The fact that this is still ongoing now, and you're talking about the big names. This is the. the this could have a. I mean, it's not. Let's, let's be real. It's not going to. It's not going to change the outcome of that title. But, but the story is that Lewis Hamilton, seven-time world champion, Sir Lewis Hamilton, is going to is potentially at risk of losing his first title. That first title that had that unbelievable finish to it. You know, the the, the one that, that that proved how good he was. That could potentially be taken away by something that happened fifteen years ago. With all of the with all of the story that happened at that point, I, I'm not saying that Abu Dhabi 2021 should not be on this list. I'm, I think it should be in podium contention for the top five greatest controversies of all time in F1. I just don't think that you're going to look back on this list in 50 years time, and you will, Cameron. I, I know you'll look back on this in 50 years time and go, "Yeah, you're right. Abu Dhabi was a bigger controversy than Crashgate." I, 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 I think a lot of that will depend on whether Lewis gets the eighth or not. If if that was it for Lewis and it got taken away from him and he never wins his eighth title, then maybe you know we could you could have that discussion. I would happily put Abu Dhabi down to three based on that and put Crashgate at two. But you guys still want Spygate at one. Yeah. All right. Fair. You've won me over, Shez. You've won me over. Boom. Oh, I can't have this. And I know you've agreed consensus, but so what? you agree. No, hold on, chaps. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I wasn't listening. But, so can, just, can Cameron win me back over? That's you've just, the question. You've just agreed. Okay. you weren't listening. No, no, I was listening, but I didn't I didn't understand the gravity of the situation. <laughs> it missed me. Did we just agree? Or did you guys just agree to put Crashgate into an Abu Dhabi in three? Uh yeah, I think so. Yeah, Baxter, that's, yeah. that's not the that's not the exam answer, sir. Crashgate in two and Abu Dhabi in three. No, Baxter, have a think about that, sir. Oh. That's see, not. Th that's th not see, the way. this is the debate that went on in my mind when I made yes. this list. Yes, because Thank like you. because they were so close. That's why I put Abu Dhabi at number one. Yeah. And now I'm talking about it again. I'm going to flip flop again and say it should go at number two. Like. He, 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 or, may, he, or maybe, or maybe they can be joint and have oh, them a joint equals, second. Equals. Ooh. That's techie. I don't. I think that's a, a against thing the never rules. done in I this. Did, yeah, in this know, unprecedented. Michael <laughs> Matty. Michael Massey settings. Look, let me, let me, let me just say this, Baxty. In closing, Abu Dhabi twenty one. What we're talking about, biggest controversies, right? Nobody's going to tell me that Abu Dhabi, as of, oh. as of. As of September 2023, <laughs> nobody's got. Don't care what Michael, what Michael Massey, what Felipe Massa is trying to relitigate for. That doesn't even. I haven't even read an article, and I'm just like Felipe, man, go where haven't you got? Like, you got. You, surely you must have something else to do, man. You're rich and you you live in Brazil and whatever. Like this is, forget about it, man. Sunk cost. 
biggest controversies, Baxty. Biggest as at September 2023. Nobody's going to argue that Abu Dhabi 2021 isn't a bigger controversy in terms of all of F1 history as of September 2023 than Crashgate. No one in their right mind. I've just had a thought that puts Abu Dhabi back above Crashgate. Uh, And the, the, the reason why that is, is Crashgate only came about a year after... Yeah... The event, whereas no Abu Dhabi time. was in the here and the now, like we it's saw, annoying. we saw Abu Dhabi play out in front of our eyes. Yeah. Yes, we did see Crashgate play out in front of our eyes, but we didn't know what didn't we were know. seeing behind closed doors. Shed, there was, there was, we doesn't didn't doesn't understand count. the shenanigans of what was <laughs> should, going on. Like, it's still incredibly controversial. Should, should, and yes, it was a team cheating and everything else, uh, but. Abu Dhabi played out in front of our eyes, and we knew exactly what was going on. And I've just, that thought has just popped into my brain. That, so that, it, it, that it doesn't, flips it, it the hit, other way for me. No, Shes, it absolutely. Doesn't hit the, 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 the fact doesn't that you, you come back a year later and go, nah. "Well, they did what?" Nah, it doesn't hit the come same, Shes. Doesn't hit the same. <laughs> and if you're talking long, long evity, <laughs> like. Abu Dhabi 21. If we if we redo this list in 20 years time, chaps, most of the people watching this video won't even remember Cra- Crashgate. What's that? Oh, no, they will remember oh, it. Are you I, I, kidding I, I, me? Genuinely, chaps, I, look, if one in four... That's heresy, Cameron. That is one, heresy. Catch this. <laughs> if one in four are Drive to Survive watchers, the thing that will live longest in the memory between the two of these, because it's bigger, is, is Abu Dhabi Every single day of the week, chaps. Anyway, we've got consensus back. You know what? <laughs> I after we finish recording this, so when you see this, to, <laughs> when it comes out, I'm gonna. It will already be there by the time this comes out. Mm. I'm gonna have a poll on Twitter, and then I'm yeah. gonna ask you to rank yeah. these five. Yeah, I, so I, mean, I can't believe we don't do this already. So we've got we've got consensus do. now, but I want you to know what was a bigger controversy. Now, I think with me putting it out there and my particular fan base that goes on. We'll probably see Crashgate come out, uh, not Crashgate, Abu Dhabi come out on top. But hundred percent, not even. A but if, if you, let's get it shared. Let's people see it. But also, I'm going to put the five that we had. I'll do this after the podcast has come out, so people can actually have a chance yeah, to watch. Do but I, I want you to rank the five as well, and uh, yeah, rank the five, and then also provide other controversies that we might have missed. Let's go. I am down for that. That's a very uh... poll will be out tonight or. It'll be there by the time this so goes no out. Idea. I yeah. feel like that might be a Twitter spaces coming on as well, not to uh, <laughs> not, not to implore you to do something against you, <laughs> Okay, so I think we've got consensus for now. Again, a, a moving target this is, but for now we've got Spygate in one, Abu Dhabi in two, notwithstanding Shez's clear detestment. Um Crashgate and Prost 90. I will defer this to both of you, chaps. In number three, we have Crashgate or Prost Senna 90, brackets 89. You what? What? How, so, how so, low down has Crashgate gone now? No, look, look. So we've, we've, can't, these are the positions that places we've concreted, crystallized even. Hidden Schumacher 94 in five. Number one is Spygate. Number two is Abu Dhabi. And then we just got a three and a four between Crashgate and Prost Senna. Yeah, oh, Crash, yeah Crashgate, Crashgate three. Four. Crashgate yeah, definitely a number three. Well, yeah. are you saying chess? Same. Yeah, I mean, I think Crashgate should be number one. So it, it can't go below 89, 90. Yeah, you uh, uh, I feel like I've gotten in my way a lot today, but I, I don't like this one. It doesn't look well. Prost, Prost Senna. Can I make a final case for Prost and Senna above Crashgate? Um, no, chaps. I said that I would defer to you and that I'll, I'll leave it there, man. I do want to argue it, though, man. It feels bigger again. Does Prost and Senna, bigger names, more iconic, um, greater ramifications Again, as far as drivers and generation of drivers, I just can't get... You know what the joke is? If it had been um, someone else that had crashed and not Nelson P.K. Jr., I think it would have been more. But Nelson P.K. Jr., lads, I mean, come on. Like, you know what I mean? What are we... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. And, and plus, I just think that F1 teams are inherently 
skullduggerous. And so I just think that that's the, that sort of stuff would have been going on every single day of the week. And that's what wants that. That's what, that's why I want to lean into putting Crashgate at four. But you know what, chaps, I will defer to your infinite wisdom on this. There you have our list in number five of the top five controversies ever in F1 history. You have Hill and Schumacher's incident, 1994. You have in fourth, Prost and Senna, 1990, brackets 89. Crashgate at number three, Abu Dhabi 21. And your top controversy ever in, in the F1 history is Spygate. Let's go. I think that's a decent list, chaps. Mm. I'm trying to see. I'm looking across each awesome. one of us and seeing who's who who got it who got their way most. Baxter had Hill and Schumacher in fifth. I think fifth. four of mine got in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's probably me. All right out of that Baxter. Yeah, I can't <laughs> Unbelievable. I can, I'm really Actually, I've home. got four. I've got four as well. I've got Hill and Schumacher, Spygate, Crashgate, Prost and Senna. I should have just, if I'd have got hungry, I would have had a clean seat. Oh, wait, I've got four as well there, haven't I? Yeah. Uh, we shit. were fairly well aligned across the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, it was just the order. Yeah, yeah. Then the order and the traction gate. What? What's he on about? She says, traction gate. You know what? There'll, there'll, be at least, <laughs> there'll be at least one person in, in, in the comments that's going to be like, yeah, I can't traction believe gate should have the control gate be, didn't get in there. There. Will, there will be more than one person. but still, It'll probably be me. <laughs> 100%. 100% right. That has been another episode. Thank you so much to you guys watching. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, continue the conversation. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on a good podcasting platform, do us a favor, scroll to the top and leave us five stars. It all helps. For co-host Baxty, for co-host Shez, I've been your, your boy Cameron as always. Remember to look, but never stare. Same time next week. Peace.